There's so much confusing and conflicting information online on how to set up your Azure subscription. It's just crazy. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to set it up right for you. Dana up here. Welcome to the channel for aspiring Azure administrators like you and me who wanna know ops and well, master the Microsoft Cloud. I'm so happy to have you here. Thanks for coming by. If you haven't yet, smash the subscribe button so you can be notified each week when I produce new videos. When you look online, there's tons of resources that are gonna be conflicting on exactly how you should be setting up your Azure subscriptions. Some say you should be putting everything in the same subscription. Others say it should be based on the environments that you have, like dev and prod and test. Others will tell you that it has to be done based on applications or maybe even departments. And they're not wrong. They're also not right because it's all gonna be dependent on how you want to build and set things up. But even with that said, there is some best practices that we can follow that will help us to make better decisions to make sure we're setting it up right for what you want to accomplish. So the best way to get started is to really think about what the purpose of a subscription is. It's a logical container that Microsoft uses to maintain their billing relationship with you. Regardless if this is a web director pay as you go or uh, an enterprise agreement or if it's a free trial or if it's a CSB subscription, at the end of the day, the billing relationship starts and stops at the subscription boundary. Now that doesn't mean you can't have multiple subscriptions and multiple bills, but that's the best way that they try to kind of group it together. More importantly though, it's an administrative security boundary. When we start thinking about things like RBAC or role-based access control and the ability to position and control who can see what, when, where, and why, subscriptions are the way to handle it. And you can see that in all the tooling. When you look at the portal or you look at the CLI, it's a logical DMARC. So when you're in the CLI and you wanna go and work with resources, you have to switch to the subscription you wanna have access to. That makes a lot of sense because it just makes all the tooling and all the decisions you're gonna make uh, all align very well. Now, that doesn't mean you can't do higher level things to manage and monitor everything. This is the purpose of things like management groups because it gives you the ability of coalescing multiple subscriptions under a managed group or multiple management groups to control and assign policy and governance and everything else that you might wanna do from an administrative point of view. But when you ask me, the best way to get started is just to go simple. Now, I'm not saying to have just one subscription. That's, there's reasons why that doesn't make a lot of sense either. But you should start out by having a minimum of two subscriptions, one for production and one for non-production. And normally when you get started, that first subscription you set up will be that non-production one. That allows you to have your ability to test and validate and work in environments uh, as required. And then when you start deploying and managing your resources for production use, that should go in a separate uh, subscription. And then depending on how and where you deploy your resources, you can then start deciding if you want to do things regional, base it on different data centers, base it on different departments. And as you get more complicated, now you can start advancing to use the management groups. But start simple, two subscriptions. And here's why. The first thing is it makes cost management really simple because now you can separate and slice and dice everything that you want to at that boundary. Now, you can still take advantage of resource groups and tags and everything to, to filter and, and, and make that a little smoother, but when it comes to the billing relationship itself, it becomes much easier to separate the cogs that might relate to your production resources and that of any of your uh, non-production or test environments. The second is, from a security perspective, it's so much easier to have trust in knowing that devs don't have any access to the production infrastructure, but they do have access inside of the non-production one. And then of course you can limit and scope it. You don't wanna give all devs you know, full subscription ownership rights. You wanna isolate it down to the resources that they need. And this gives you that flexibility. And this is where things like are back for resource groups and whatnot gives you some more flexibility. The other side to this though, is it allows you to create a separated and easy way of following on how some of the higher level services may function. An example is things like Azure DevOps. When you create the connection between the DevOps and the resources that you're gonna run in Azure, that's typically done 
through a service principle that is then given permissions and access at the subscription level. So it makes a lot of sense to want to try to isolate it and control it there. It also means that you can then create different service principles for different subscriptions so developers can work in the pipelines to be able to give access and automate through infrastructure as code and configuration as code to deploy to their test environments and allows you to separate and isolate what happens in production so that they don't have direct access to that information. So there you go. When you first get started, think about subscriptions in that way. Logical containers for billing, logical containers for security isolation and separation as it relates to RBAC. If you then focus it that way, you can easily get started and then take advantage of looking and seeing if you need other subscriptions to expand and grow out your organization. And then you can use management groups to manage those subscriptions and it adhere to governance and compliance as you need to uh, through those management scopes instead of worrying about it at the subscription level. Let me know what you think. Does that make sense to you? Does that resonate with what you would do? Or do you have a better way of doing it? Leave a note in the comments if you don't agree with me and let's have that conversation online. I'd like for everyone to weigh in on this. I will leave in the description some links to some documentation Microsoft provides that helps you start looking at and making decisions on how you should roll out your subscriptions based on their guidance. But as you get started, trust me on this, try it just using it as production and non-production, see how that goes, and then start looking in more depth as required. Let me know if this makes sense. Hit like, smash the subscribe button if you haven't. We'll talk to you in the next episode.